Okay. Um, I'm going to turn the uh, dust collector on. It shouldn't affect the device too much. If it does, I'll turn it off. But is that a, does that affect the? Oh, I have to press the continue button. Uh, uh, no. and, All right. And we, no, you're fine. And we Are we good? Fine. Yeah. Okay. So um, I've got the two by two lock in here, and I'm just trapping it with the back end here so it can't go anywhere. And I'm going to take a spindle gouge. Could you show eight inch that? spindle gouge? You go to overhead. Start ball. taking that down. I'm going to give you a overhead shot. There you go. All right. And I'm running the lathe at uh, about 2,000 RPM. And I'm just checking to see that it's round up here. And then I'm going to, when I, when I make the curve, what I'm doing with the uh, spindle gouge is, um, let me see if I can get a, a, a real close up. I'm starting on the bevel with the uh, flute open, wide open uh, like this. And as I bring it around, I'm lifting and closing the flute down to the bottom. And that gives me my, my rounded area. Now, what it helps to know where the center is. And since these things are um, slightly different every time I do them, I just measure with the caliper, and it tells me that this is a, a two and one tenth. So I'll come down to one and a half and uh, take a pencil and mark the center. Like that. Just so I can see that I've got all the uh, flat area and I'm down past the uh, square. And on the end here, what I'm going to do now, get rid of the tail stock. And I'm going to drill a half inch hole all the way through the piece. I used to do it with 3 8 inch drill. Then I asked myself one day why. This is a lot easier with a half inch drill to hollow the form. And to get the drill started nice and square, I'm going to uh, put a little divot. here like that with the uh, spindle gouge. <clears throat> Lock down the tailstock and put the speed down. Speed now is about a thousand RPM. And I can't get all the way through them when my, my uh, quill is not long enough. So I back it out, push it in, and go again. OK. And it's through. So that will help me later when I finish ra uh, rounding it off and sanding it. Get this out of the way. And now I have to hollow it. And I hollow one half of it at a time.
And there are lots of hollowing tools. One of the ones that I like, I can find it, here it is, is um, I get the, just get the overhead. This is a uh, carbide tool uh, sold by Penn State. It's got a tiny little carbide cutter on it and you get three tools for $60. The replacement carbides are uh, three for $15. So that's a pretty good deal. And what I'm going to do now is just take out some of the wood in the middle so that when I'm trying to hollow around the edges, I don't have a lot of wood in the middle to work with. Anybody has a question, unmute yourself and speak up. I have earphones on. I should be able to hear you. At least that, that's the theory. So I'm just, I'm just hogging out some wood in the middle of this thing, turning my speed back up to about 1,500. And I found that most of the time, if I'm going to ruin something, it's when I'm removing the tool from the piece, not when I'm putting it in. So uh, if I turn it off, that, that doesn't happen. Um, there are lots of little curved hollowing tools like this. Another one of the, um, the Penn State Industries carbide tools also works. But I like this uh, little, this is a Sorby tool. It's a uh, a uh, 3 16 inch uh, tool and it has a, the cutter tip is just a scraper. Well, what I wanted to tell you that that tool has ruined more of my little hollow forms than any other tool I've ever owned. Is somebody talking to me? I said that particular Sorby tool right there has, it has broken the neck out of more of my hollow forms than any other tool. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you're, you're kind of watching it backwards. I, don't, I guess this camera is a little bit behind the uh, piece, but actually I'm, the, you know, it's facing toward me. So I'm just going to take that in. And about where how to know where you are is that if this is in this far, I know I'm at least the halfway mark and on the inside. And if the if the um, if the handle is over at this angle, I know that I'm of about an eighth of an inch off the edge. It's probably showing the overhead camera better. So if if I'm like that, I'm I'm getting pretty close to the edge. And I'll blow some of the dust out of there. And I have a, a wire gauge made out of a piece of uh, hanger wire. And this gap on here is a half an inch. So if I put the wire gauge into the hole like this, I can tell the difference between the uh, edge and the, um, the, the wire, the edge of the sphere and the wire to, as to how thin or thick it is. So I'm about halfway, about a quarter of an inch now. I can take out a little bit more. And the purpose the uh, whole purpose for hollowing is to make the thing lighter. It, it, it reduces the weight considerably to uh, get that wood out of here. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit deeper. And 
I'm going to be happy with that. And now the, the $64,000 question is, how am I going to hold it to do the other half? And this is where something I call a um, cup chuck. comes in. And the cup chuck is nothing more than a, um, a block of wood that's larger, a little larger than maybe it was a, a three by three or a little larger than the uh, uh, piece here. And, uh, the, and, and not so deep that this bottoms out. Now this is a little bit small because I want to, I want to work from that center out to the edge. So I have a number of cup chucks. Three of them. And uh, I mean, I'm sorry, I, I said it was small. This one's a little bit large. Because I can't get to the center very well. This one might be a little bit small because to grab it, I have to be, I have to have enough wood in there to grab that, that piece. But we're gonna give this one a try. If, if it's not, if it's too small, I can always cut it down a little bit and make it work. But between these three chucks, I usually get, I can get everything done. Any questions about it so far? Now I, I center this, With a live center. Walt, well, I just want you to know we're still out here watching. You're doing a Pardon? great job. I said we're still out here watching. You're doing a great job. I didn't want you to get too lonely. Is it okay? <laughs> yeah, it's excellent. <laughs> All right. So I'm center I'm centering that in the cup chuck. And you can see that the center line that I'm gonna be working from for the other side is a good half, well, three eighths of an inch a half inch away from the block. That's a little bit far, but we'll, we'll give it a, a shot. Now this part of it, I'm not hollowing yet, I'm just rounding it off. So I'm, I'm back to where, what I was doing before is just taking the spindle gouge, knocking the edges off. And then uh, putting the, again, putting the spindle gouge, the, the uh, bevel on the wood here and just bringing it around. Well, so basically what you're doing is just, is just turning a large bead. Like that. Correct? The use of that tool, basically what you're doing is just turning a large bead, correct? And that's all, all there is to that, but now we have to hollow it. And I can't have the tail stock in the way. So the question is, is it gonna stay in there while well, I got the hollowing tool in there where there's a lot more force than there is with the gouge. So I take a dead blow hammer and I just give it a, a shot like that. And it seems pretty secure. So I'm gonna set up the hollow it. Now, if it should come out, it'll stay on the uh, tool. So it's not gonna fly anywhere. Either that or it'll go down the dust collector. Then I start with a different piece of wood. The dust collector is eating about three pieces of sandpaper yet today already. Turn the speed down a little bit.
when I'm inside there, I can feel the uh, ridge from the other side. So I know I'm about the same thickness, but I can always use the um, gauge to double check it. That looks pretty good. So now the question is, how do we get that thing out of there? I take my um, knockout tool, just give it a little pull, and it comes out. So now I have my, my hollow globe. And it's, uh, it's not quite round. It's, it's, uh, it, it looks like a sphere, but it's not quite round yet. But we'll take care of that in a second. Do people often take a micrometer to your Christmas ornaments? <laughs> no, no. And, and you wouldn't, I mean, you can make them oval, make them like an egg, and they, they even like that. And so it's not, it's not uh, rocket science. Uh, it doesn't have to be that, that exact. So I have another little, this is, a, I don't want to call it a jig, it's just a, uh, a little jam chuck. That has a half inch. So that stirs that up. And you can take a, uh, negative rake scraper and just kind of go over the outside edge, remembering that you, remembering that you've already hollowed it. So you don't, you're not taking off a whole bunch of wood. Okay, it looks uh, pretty good for government work here. And um, I'll go ahead and sand it, starting with uh, 120, kick the speed down. And this is where the um, dust collector really helps. Just get rid of any tool marks. Oh, I heard a little uh, joke. Uh, you know what kind of wood celebrities like to turn the most? Anybody no. Out there? What kind of wood do celebrities like to turn the most? Hollywood. <laughs> All right. I know it's bad. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. There There's this cowboy that rode into uh, Monticello and he tied up his horse 
I'm looking for my um, 240, 320. And, and so all these folks down here in Gainesville want to know, Monticello is a city right outside of Tallahassee. Yeah, it's east of Tallahassee, 25 miles. Wow. And uh, he rode up and tied up his horse outside the bar and went in for a drink. Well, when he came out, his horse, his horse was gone. And he was, he was all upset and he, he said, well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go back in and have another drink. And when I come out, that horse better be there. I'll have to do what I did in Texas. And the, the people that they got all upset and they went out and they, they, they found who took his horse and brought his horse back. And when he came out, uh, he said, ah, great, the horse is there. And he got on the horse and started to ride off. And one of the um, uh, town people said, well, tell us, uh, if the horse wasn't there, what is it you had it, that you did that was in Texas? And he says, I walked home. <laughs> <Ta -da, ta -da. laughs> yeah, you got you got to give us something so we can laugh at you. I mean, so you know we're out here. So you know we're out here. Well, I've been trying to. Uh, you know, there's 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 Halloween jokes and sanding jokes. I guess these are sanding jokes. Now, what I <laughs> what I'm putting on here is um, Parfix. Uh, 3408. Let's see if I can get it turned in the right direction so you can see what the sign says. Wait a minute, I'm going to my overhead camera. There we go. Parfix 3408. It's a uh, very thin, water thin super glue. And I got it from Mark Soleil. He sells it. Um, I don't know if you all know who Mark Soleil is, but he's also a demonstrator. And we had him down here in Tallahassee one time for a demonstration and he brought this uh, super glue. It's a medical grade super glue. It dries rather slow and it's water thin. Now the little bottle is 40 bucks, but it, it, it uh, makes a wonderful finish on small things like pens and uh, these Christmas ornaments. So for any club members that are interested, Paula also carries that. I got some from her the other day. For doing Who carries it? Paula Nix. Does oh, does she? Yeah. Is it a better price? <laughs> uh, no, I think the price was about the same. It's pricey. <laughs> it is pricey. I, I don't normally use an accelerator, but I move this along. I'm going to go ahead and do that. The glue dries slow, uh, more slowly than uh, regular um, super glue, but it... Uh, I'm going to get this off of here for now. So there's, there's my hollow globe, and the next part of it is the uh, finial. And I know there was a whole bunch of stuff from AAW on finials, but that's not the way I do it. So I'm going to show you how I do it. I have to switch chucks. And when I'm doing, let's see where I put the key for this chuck. Uh, you know, I knew something like this was gonna happen. Here it is. All right. It's okay, Walt. We're recording it. What's that? I said, it's okay. We're recording it. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, normally I try to find a contrasting color wood. It looks like I have some cherry here. And these are uh, about three quarter by three quarter by seven inches. The finials for a two inch ball, I usually make it four to four and a half inches. And I just trap it in the uh, spigot chuck. And 
And so the first thing I want to do is just make sure it's going to spin relatively straight and it looks good. And now I'm going to taper it from this end to this end. And you can either do that with a um, spindle roughing gouge or a skew. Uh, most, most people like to avoid the skew. When I'm doing when I'm doing finials, I'll do a dozen at a time just because it's set up and it, it just makes sense to go ahead and not do one at a time. So I'm gonna switch over to my skew now. And what I have is a little half inch skew. And the whole, the whole secret to using the skew is to not put the point in first, put the uh, bevel on the wood and push it along. So I have this down to about an eighth of an inch and I'm just gonna shape the end. If I want a teardrop shape, I'll pull it back here and just come in like that. I don't know, if, let me see if I can put this white thing back on here. Does that help? Yes. Yes, that, that helps a lot. That Thank makes you. a lot of difference. All right. So I'm I'm just going to shape that off a little bit. And then if I put a, any detail up here, like a little cup or a little uh, end, I'll do that. And then cut it down to the uh, thickness that I want that I want it to be. I'll go now, crazy with them, want something a little more I'm very durable. good at dropping things. Pardon? All right. So um, I typically put like one of those onion form things back here. Hey, Walt. Yes. Would you please uh, cool. blow off the dust on your whiteboard, please? Or just wipe it off again. Yeah, or just wipe it off. Yeah, just yeah, there, there you go. go. Oh, yeah. Perfect. You got a vacuum right there. That's awesome. Let me move the dust collector back, and it should take it off. <laughs> Thank you. There. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to form this little. Um, onion. And then there are any number of things you can do down here. Um, a typical uh, Cindy Drosa type finial will have a, a tiny little bead there. One that I like is kind of uh, a cove inside a double bead. And that I don't try to do with the skew. So the little spindle gouge. I don't know. See if I can get a the the is that better? That works. Yeah, that's better. Oh, that's nice. I have a light. Sometimes the light helps, sometimes it doesn't. All right. So I have the basic shape that I want for the um, finial. And I'll measure. I'll measure off uh, four inches. That puts the end of it back here. And I'll take my uh, parting tool 
and just come in and mark the end like that. And then I have to decide what I'm going to do between there and the uh, other end. And it, I don't know if you can see this, but there's still a little square spot right there and right there. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of those. I'm going to cut this down like that. And if I can make this, this part here and this part here about the same on either side of the cove, I'm happy. So that's ready to be sanded and um, I only have one more joke. That's a parrot joke. This one wanted a, an African gray. She went in a pet store and he says, well, I've, I've got one. I'll sell it for $50. She says, $50? Those things go for thousands of dollars. How come fifty dollars? Well, this one's got some history behind it. It used to uh, it used to uh, belong to a bartender, and it has some bad language. <laughs> she said, "Well, I'll take care of that." And she said, "I'll take it." She took it home, and everything was going fine. And one day, she fell asleep and didn't par didn't get bed on time. And when she woke up and went over to a cage, the parrot just let her have it. Blue streak. Just swore a blue streak. She said, well, you're not going to talk to me like that. And she picked the parrot up out of the cage and put him in the freezer. Well, 15 <laughs> minutes later, she took the parrot out of the freezer and, and the parrot was shaking and shivering. And she said, do we, do we understand each other? And he goes, yes, ma'am. Everything's going along okay. Well, let me stop here for a second. What I've got to do is I've got to make a um, tenon. blocking on what to call it. Uh, help yeah. me out. A tenon? Tenon. There we go. I have to make a half inch tenon on this side. And I have a half inch tenon wrench right here. <laughs> and it's sharpened. <laughs> on the top and on the bottom, like that. So if I get close, let me put my tenon wrench up there. Ooh, Push it right hard. through. And I have my half inch tenon. which should fit in a half inch hole. And before I do anything else, I have to undercut that so that it sits flat on the sphere. And I have a, um, a, small, a small skew and I just come in here like that and undercut it so that it, it, will, it will sit square on the uh, skew. So anyhow, things are going okay, and um, the parrot's in the cage and everything and behaving itself, and then she, she, go, she went shopping and she forgot to feed the parrot, and when she came home, the, the parrot was all upset and just started swearing, blue streak again. So she took him out, put him in the freezer, and forgot about him for about an hour. Ooh. So she comes back out and the parrot is just about comatose and um, uh, it's shaking. And she said, do we have an understanding? Yes, ma'am. Can I ask one question? She said, well, what is that? He says, what was it that turkey in there said? <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right.
right, I'm gonna put my uh, par fix on the finial now. Well, yeah. You, you, you couldn't see it, but you got a chuckle out of everybody on that one. They were all laughing. <laughs> That's better than the um, Hollywood, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I used to own parrots, and they can come up with some of the damnedest things. Oh, I know. Almost like kids. Oh, I know. They actually say things. Oh, baby, do they ever. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I have another parrot joke, but I can't tell it. <laughs> Actually, I forgot how the punchline goes. All right. Oh, so that don't worry, Walt. You can tell me any joke. I will laugh at it, and I'll try to tell it again. <laughs> and you'll laugh at it, too, because I tell it so badly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so we're ready to cut this one off, and uh, I have a, a little thin little thing that uh, cut uh, cut off tool that was made out of a uh, reciprocal saw blade. It works great, but. I've learned that if I don't want to chase something across the floor, I'm going to put a little bit of um, accelerator on this too, so I, I can take it off without sticking to it. So Walt, well, did you, did I see you putting that on with your fingers, with the glue on your fingers? No, no, no. I had a, I had a, a, a piece of tissue like this. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I was saying. I looked like your you would get it looked like it would get on your fingers. But I guess not. Never mind. Uh, sometimes it does. My my phone won't work for a week if I do a lot of these. So I'll just cut it off and set it aside. It might be a good idea to see if it fits into the. Uh, well, that. that this side isn't fitting real tight because this isn't coming down straight enough. So I have a solution for that. But it fits on this side pretty well. Now this side, the tenon is already there for, the, um, for this side. All I have to do is undercut it. I'm going to move it out a little bit. I don't have a lot of wood here. It's running pretty good. I may have missed it, but what kind of wood is that you're cherry. using for the finial? Cherry. cherry. Okay. I'm sorry. Local cherry, black cherry. Grows like a weed. All right. That's good enough. <clears throat> Yeah, the nicest wood for doing finials is African blackwood. That stuff just turns so, so nice. But I don't have a lot of it. Uh, I'll undercut that with that same small skew and hopefully I can undercut it enough that I get a nice square I'm cheating I'm
Okay, that's good. Nice, nice tight fit. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off. I'll have to work with this uh, whiteboard, Jack. I, I don't know. <clears throat> Uh, well, I put a uh, I put a magnet on the bottom of mine that you didn't see that helps it from sliding. Now all I the I put a little uh, spacer on the bottom so it sits more flat on the. Uh, did you do that? Yeah, no, I just put a I just put a little small magnet embedded and just glued it to the bottom. That might huh? work with the spacer. Oh, on the. Uh, okay. Yeah, so it, so it stayed on the uh, banjo. Sounds like a good idea. Oh. So I'm just gonna. Cut that down like that. Go with a little 400. Ah. Put a little parfix. You do want to turn the speed down when you put this Parfix on because I have spots on my glasses. It's so thin it, it does want to come off. And now I'll assemble this. right here. And what I've done is on my um, live center, maybe I can take it off and show you. I've drilled a hole in the top, in the right in there. And that will allow me to um, line everything up nice and square. And then all I'm going to use is. Uh, thick CA glue I'll put some thick CA glue around the edge here and a little thick CA glue around the edge here And I can just bring this up into that hole. It holds it nice and square while it dries. I can hit that with a little accelerator also. You wouldn't want to do the accelerator, if you had lacquer on there, it messes it up. I mean, you probably all know that, but it has acetone in it. I could take my handy little saw. Saw it off.
And when I put an eye hook in there, I'm gonna I'm gonna buff it. I'll show you how I buff it. So the Well, that looks very nice. The easy part's done. Uh, where did I put my buffing wheel? Whoop. Here it is. Thank you. This is a Beal buffing wheel. It's nothing, nothing special. You get an overhead shot. Uh, I'll move my camera a little bit. And when I when I have students and and they want to buff something, I always say, "Well, hold on tight with both hands, because when it takes it out of your hand and it hits the floor, bad things happen." Do you get to go visit that turkey? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, use, you use turkey words. <laughs> For sure. And um, the other thing, so see where I put it. Uh, that uh, Mark Soleil sells is something called a, well, it hasn't got a name on it anymore. It's, a, it's another rouge, but it's something between a rouge and a white diamond. And uh, it, it does a real nice job on this uh, super glue. Bonex, V-O-N-E-X it's called. For the members that don't know who Mark Soleil is, if you go to YouTube and you and you uh, do a do a search for Mark Soleil, you'll find out he has several YouTube videos that are very very good. How do you spell Soleil? Uh, Soleil S I L A Y, I believe. So it's not some fancy French name. Okay. Mark Mark has a uh, he's, he he talks about wood slicing. Which of course is what really you do if you're if you're cutting uh, with the grain, um, but he sharpens his spindle gouge uh, basically with a convex um, grind on the on the on the bevel, so that the the actual bevel uh, uh, that you're you're riding on the wood is very very small. And you know, I, I, I actually started doing that because Rudy Lopez showed me that a couple of years ago and it makes it a lot more controllable when you get that, that point of that, like in a really, really tight spot. Like when Rudy makes that cup on a plate, uh -huh. that, uh, that type of bevel is a much more controllable bevel than just a regular concave bevel off the wheel. Yeah. Well, on um, what I like is if, if you if you can let's see get a close up here I turned off the on um, uh. on my spindle gouge it's like uh i cut i cut the, the the bevel here about 40 degrees then it's got two other bevels uh behind it to get the can you see that you can't see that can you it's got two other bevels behind it uh to get the the metal out of the way so that you can get in almost like a detail gouge and sometimes I'll use, um, this is a uh, Cindy Droza detail gouge. It's a, it's a fluteless gouge with a really little tiny little, maybe one thirty second bevel. And then the rest of the, the uh, metal is taken out of the way. 
And um, this, when I first got it, I used to call it my catchy, catchy tool. Because you couldn't use it without getting that edge in there without getting a catch. But now I've gotten used to it. So that's, that's it, basically. Um, let me go back to my overhead thing, or my uh, end view camera. And um, when you, if you're going to do these in production, you don't make a whole thing at one time. You go ahead and you make a bunch of globes. And I've got a box of globes and a box of uh, uh, finials. And when I make when I make the finials, what I do is I, I make the top and bottom finial and I put them in a plastic bag so they stay together. So the wood, I know what what wood goes uh, with what finial. And um, if I'm making a three eighths inch finial end, uh, I mean, uh, um, what you call, like what'd you call a, that again? <laughs> a tenon. Tenon. You're making a three eighths inch tenon that sticks together with the three eighths inch tenon. <laughs> it looks like we have a, a question. Um, Don, do you have a question? I see your hand is up. Or if you want to send it to me in chat. Yeah, go. Uh, I haven't sent it to you. And let me turn the, the uh, dust collector off so I can hear you better. There, okay. okay. Sure. I can hear you. This this member, Don, Don Geiger was having some problems with his audio. So um, Don, if you can hear me, send it to me in chat and I'll, I'll read it out. I'm going to unmute everybody if you want to have, if you have any questions um, for Walt. Almost everybody's unmuted who wants to be unmuted. Go for it. Oh. So what do you, you sell these for? Um, it depends. Well, they, they, if I go at market days, they'll go for $25. It's the same thing in the gallery, but I don't get $25 in the gallery because they take a cut of 40, they take 40%. So um, I make somewhere between oh, 15 and $20 on one. But they, you can sell it for 25 Oh yeah, they, I'll sell out every year. I sell out. I, I'll I'll make two hundred of these things and wow, sell out. Well, I'm doing three different venues. Market days may not happen this year. Unfortunately, it's the first weekend in December at the fairgrounds, and they have, um, you know, three hundred vendors and uh, eight thousand customers. Something like that. But the Lemoyne Gallery is still open to you, right? The Lemoyne Gallery, yeah, they have a Christmas show every year, and uh, they take forty percent. But I can put, I, I mean, they generally, I'll, I'll put uh, somewhere about thirty um, uh, ornaments with them, and then I'll take more down there toward, toward the end. Do you sign them? No. I mean, I guess I could, but I, I don't. Um, the, uh, the other uh, thing that I do with Lemoyne, though, is if you, if you put in pieces that are uh, under $50, and of course, these, these are 25, if you put, put in pieces that are under $50, you can put in three larger pieces. And I usually end up selling a, a larger piece, too. So that, that helps out. Same thing with market days, um, although these sell very, very well, the, um, you know, I'll, I'll take a bunch of bowls or a urn or something like that. And I mean, you know, a bunch of urns <laughs> with the COVID virus, it might, might be popular, who knows. Um, but um, uh, I always do fairly well, it, but the Christmas ornaments are sure. the best. The, um, one that, that um, particularly like people like are this little, let me see if I can put the end camera on. This, this little uh, bird cage ornament, which is That's quite cute. simple to make. Uh, it, Where do you looks, get your little birds? Uh, craft shop, I forget the name of it. It's online. Uh 
Um, but if you go online, you look for, they're called uh, mushroom birds. Okay. Uh, you can get them all different sizes. And, uh, and of course, the, the typical little birdhouse thing that, uh, that everybody makes. Any other questions? How big is the globe on that birdhouse? How big is the what? That's on the, the two globe? by two. Two by two? Yeah. It's, it, well, it might be a, a slightly bigger than two by two, but the, um, this, is, this is made basically by running a, a Fosner bit in on each side until you hit the middle and then, and then rounding it off. No, it's not, it's not difficult to make. And I don't generally sand the middle. Sometimes I'll paint the middle uh, or do something like that. Uh, but the Fosner bit gives you a pretty good, pretty good surface if it's sharp. Uh, other questions? Well, I thank you, Jack, for, for doing our club show. And, um, you know, I hope we can get started the meeting face to face. But the problem is we meet in a school, a middle school. Oh, no, it's a high school. And I'm thinking that they're not going to want us in there at night uh, because they're probably sanitizing the place or doing something like that. And the, and the janitors probably want to go home. There's some nice parks. Maybe you can do like we're doing and do something outside. That's a great idea. I'm thinking we could probably even do it over here at my house. We have a lot of room outside. And well, I could, and, I could probably wheel a, a, a lathe outside. I, I'm on the email list for several other wood turning clubs, and I saw a, a club in Texas is doing theirs outside as well. So, Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's a, a, a really good idea. And I like the idea of the morning. That's, that's much, much better because uh, we have a lot of thunderstorms. <laughs> Around December, I'll probably uh, move that to the afternoon. And, and, and humidity, uh, like you wouldn't believe up here. So, uh, yeah, that's a that's a great idea. I think I'll I'll. We have uh, Mike Peace doing uh, another remote demo next month in September. Mike, Mike and, Mike's a good turner. Yeah, he's yeah. he's a he's a good friend, and um, he's going to do our our uh, demo in September. And then in October, we have a club member that wants to try it. So we'll see. But we could we could probably do the outside thing. You have also. a beautiful shop. So do you want to <laughs> it's tell a mess. us what, yeah. what, what happens behind you? I mean, you've got quite a lot of room back there. Um, yeah, I've, I've got I've got a metal lathe and a mill in the back, in the way back. And I've got a laser printer uh, over in the corner over there. I've got a table saw up here. Band saw, band saw, uh, powermatic, drill press, grinder. You're, you're rivaling Steve Rimmer. <laughs> what about that has, has milling machines and metal lays and all kinds of stuff in his shop too. That's his well, wife. What's, what's <laughs> funny is that we had I had a um, a student from uh, FSU Music School come out here and he wanted to know how to turn. Uh, um, a neck tube for a clarinet, oh. and he brought a drawing, and it had uh, it had all the dimensions on it, and there was a taper, a one-inch taper inside of a a, a borehole that went five thousandths from one side to the other side. So we did it on the metal lathe. Wow! Yeah. Wow. It were, it worked. He thought he could do it on the wood lathe. I said, there is no way. <laughs> no way that I You almost need a CNC for that. Yeah, that's, that's actually how they're produced. They're produced with CNC machines and, uh, and CNC uh, lathes. I bought a digital uh, readout for the metal lathe. I didn't have a digital readout, and that, that made it possible to do it. Um, of course, any excuse to buy a tool is a good excuse. <laughs> Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> yeah. I see a, I see a lot of heads nodding, yes. Well folks, do you have any you have any questions of Walt? Does anybody have anything they want to bring up? Oh Walt's a tool junkie just like the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. 
you know, like you just, mean, you just, you just used to buy more tools. That's all. No, oh, I you have just to tell can't you, grind them to... up and put them in a syringe. So you got to like put them on the floor. I have to tell you a funny story. All right. I had, I have this mini, this uh, midi lathe and I wanted an extension. So I went on eBay and uh, somebody was advertising. It was, it was an, an extension and it said for parts only. I thought, well, you know, it is a part, but I, I want the extension. So I, I ordered it was $160, $159 or something like that. Well, about a week later, a FedEx truck pulls up in the driveway and drops off this great big box. It was a, it was a jet midi lathe, a whole lathe. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And evidently, the box had been dropped. There were some parts on it that were broken off, like the little handle on the back of the... Uh, the tail uh, stock. Tail stock here. And and it, it sounded like a thrashing machine when I started it up. So I, I aligned the head, I aligned the pulleys. It still didn't sound right. So I ordered twenty dollars worth of bearings and put them in and it's just like new. Um. I still don't have my extension. <laughs> <laughs> you can always put two of them together. There you go. Well the actually the beds are quite different on the old on um, the old jet midi lays and the new jet midi lays, the beds are totally different. Oh. I like the old one actually better than I like the new one. So, uh, Jack, were you asking for general questions? Yes, if you have a question, ask it. Yeah, I, well, I wondered if uh, if if you or Stephanie could send us a, send us a, out a picture of that jig for setting your platform at a certain angle. Yes. There's slide number two, I think, or three. I'll send all three slides to you. Thank you. You're welcome. I tried to draw it, but it went away before I got it down. Okay. I have, I have oh. photographic evidence. Quickly, Richard. Uh, I've, I've got the drawings for the uh, platform for a wheelchair uh, lathe stand. But I don't know the width of the lathes that everybody else has got, or the VA's got, that's, or whatever. That's not what's important, and, and we'll get with you later because Jason and I have drawn up some plans. And what's important is the standard wheelchair size, which we need to measure. So well, I've got that. We're working, <laughs> we're working on it. We'll get with you in the near future. Okay, because I I, I want to build one. But the little itty bitty lay that I've got, I don't think everybody else has got. Well, I'll, I'll explain to you later how how we'll make that work. Okay, that's great. Good simple. Get with get with me on that, please. I will. I won't forget you. Any Thank other you. questions? Greg, do you have any comments before we're done? Okay, Greg shook his head no. Uh, <laughs> Walt, one more thing, Walt. Thank you so much for. Uh, Thank for, you. For demonstrating for us. Oh, I, I, I enjoyed enjoy it. it. I, I, and, uh, very good, Paul. Very good. Well, take care. Thanks again. Yes, sir. I really uh, enjoyed that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Folks, we'll, uh, we'll try this again next year. Every Thursday night, we've been trying to have a social hour. So if you want to join us, uh, Stephanie's pretty good about sending out the notices. Yep. It's really hard. All you have to do is click on it. You'll be there. Yeah. We're going to say hi. Howdy. All right. No, I'll, I don't I'll call that an evening. Oh, you all know about that symposium thing coming up at the end of the month, don't you? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah we said it's on the, on the 19th email. to the 22nd. Yeah. Something like that, yeah. No, oh. Definitely send an email for it. No. Oh. That's the Amputee Coalition. All right. So here's a question. I just yeah. did, did, you, did everybody get an email about the Worldwide Symposium? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Okay, because I thought I sent it out. You can get you can get enough Zoom for the rest of your life, right there. Yeah, and I'll, I'll be honest, I'm kind of zoomed out right now. <laughs> okay, well, thank you all. I'm going to sign off. Thank, 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 thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Jack. Thank you. Jack. Hey, Jack. Yes. Try doing Zoom for your job as well as your recreation. <laughs> I'm gonna pass it. Jason, I get to beat on cars with big hammers for my life. <laughs>
Yeah, I have another question. I have another okay. question. Okay, Go Richard. Because uh, I think Larry was coming on. Is there a sawdust session Saturday? Oh, I forgot oh, about that. Yeah. Larry? Larry? Uh, that's what I wanted to bring up. Uh, no, Joan is not feeling well. Don't know. Uh, don't think it's contagious or anything, but it's just she would rather not have it. But we okay. will try for next month instead. No sawdust session. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Our prayers are Godspeed. Yes. Going yes. once, going twice. Good night. Good night, y'all. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye. 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 Bye